Hello, hi everyone. Welcome again to Hope Alive with Mary. What a pleasure to be here with you guys again. Hope you're doing very well. It is well. It's right where I am. It, today is a bit better. We've got some sunshine come through today. So yeah, it's a great day. It's a good day. Hallelujah. So you're welcome to my channel again. If you are a returning subscriber, God bless you. If you're new to this channel, please stay pure. Stay here. Don't go anywhere. So press the new, um, uh, subscription button, subscribe, press the notification button. That way you get to know as soon as we have a new video out. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up, like the video, share it, and let's all be a blessing together. Today, I have another very important or uh, interesting topic to, for us to talk about today. And that is why I, I'm asking you a question, actually. Why are you limiting God? Why are you limiting God? Or rather, should I say, stop limiting God? I think that is more of a command and I should take, have more punch. Stop limiting God. Stop limiting God. And I can hear you say, how can I limit God? How can a person limit God? God is also powerful. He's this sovereign, powerful God. How can a human being limit him? Hmm. Yes, you can. And you probably have, even up until this time. To start with, if you don't know he could, have, he could be limited, then you're probably already limiting him. <laughs> yes, don't limit God. Why are you limiting God? I'm going to read the scripture to you while before we go into this conversation. And I'm going to keep my video short. I always try to do that. So um, in Psalm 78, Psalm 78 verse 1, the scripture said about the children of Israel, the Bible says, yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Again and again, they tempted God and they limited the Holy One of Israel. He was talking about the children of Israel. The Bible says again and again, they limited God. What does that mean? What does it even mean? What does it mean? What did they do in the, in, in, in the wilderness? Because the Bible said they limited God. How did they limit God? It was due to their unbelief. Because they could not believe. Bear in mind, the Bible, see, the word of God is rich. And all these truths are there. In James chapter 1, he said, Anyone who acts and does not believe should not expect anything from God. In other words, your unbelief limits God from blessing you, from you know, doing all that he has promised to do in your life. So the Bible said they limited God. And in Hebrew, again, I'll read that one to us. In Hebrew, the Bible said in Hebrew chapter 3 verse 19, it said, see, sorry, it says, so we see that it was because of their unbelief that they were unable to enter the promised land. Their unbelief, remember the promised land had been promised to them already. So you see, you think sometimes we say, oh, God is so sovereign. One God has spoken, it must come to pass. Yes, but there is something that has to be done for his word to come to pass. Yes, his word will not return to him void. True, but there are a lot of his promises hovering around that has not returned to him because he can't return void. But they are hovering around, not finding expression in your life and in my life. And this is because of unbelief. The Bible says, Prom God, the promised land was promised. But only those, the generation of Joshua and Caleb, who believed, entered. And those who refused to believe, none of them entered. So why, I ask again, why are you limiting God? Why are you limiting God? God was, is so clear, in James, also in James chapter 2. I'll read that for us. James, sorry, 4.3. Oh, the... Of James chapter 4, verse 2, the B part of it, say you quarrel, you fight. You do not have because you do not ask. You limit God when you don't ask. And then again, when you ask, and you ask to squander it on your own sinful pleasure, again, you are limiting God from blessing you. In John 16, 24, he said, he said, until now you have asked for, he said, until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete. God is faithful. God can be trusted. 
There's one of the uh, videos on, on the channel that we talked about. God can be trusted. Please go and watch that video. I have had to go back and listen to that particular video a couple of times because I'm always encouraged and charged up each time I listen to it. Go and listen to it. God can be trusted. God has made you and I a promise, but we limit him when we don't believe him, when we don't trust him. The Bible says in Jeremiah 7, 17, they say, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, that he will be like a tree that is by the waters. And that we, they will not know when drought comes. He said their leaves will be evergreen. They will bear forth fruit in season. So when others are, leaves are falling like in autumn now, we are in autumn Oh, no, no, winter, brother. For when we came into autumn, the leaves dry. So if we are still in winter, very soon by the time we get into spring, they might start coming up again. But we are in winter that the trees are all bare. They are bare, all the leaves are gone, it's dry. But the Bible says that tree that is planted by the waters, and we, we always blossom. Why? Because they trust in God. I charge you today to trust God. Don't limit, limit God's ability and power in your life. Don't limit what God can do to, for you to you and for your family. Don't limit what God can do in your community. Don't limit what God can do in your country because there's really no limit to what God can do, but he can be limited on what he's able to do. We can stop him when we don't believe. He said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. It is faith that gives you access into that promise. It is faith that unlocks that promise into your life. Say, so don't you expect you will get anything if you don't have faith. So your lack of faith has been limiting God to move in your life, to move in your community, in your church, and in your circumstance. So today I am saying to you, stop limiting God. Stop limiting God. Free him to do what only he and he alone can do in your life, in your home, in your family, in your country, community, or wherever you are. I hope this was a blessing. If it was, please don't forget to share, like it. Leave me a comment. What's your opinion? And you could share with me how you have limited God in the past. Have you limited God before? How did you do it? In which area did you limit God? God bless you. I'll be with you again very soon. Bye-bye.